Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holdner. Welcome to the channel. Please, before we get going, again, again, and again, make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all of this testing. Today, we're giving a high five to the small block Chevy 305. That's right, I didn't say 350 or 327, 307, 283. Any of the others, we're talking about the 305. Chevrolet used it a lot. There's lots of them out there and guys want to know, how do I make more power? So I'm going to show you how to make 200, 300, I'm going to talk about making 400, 500, and 600 horsepower out of your 305. So what do you say? Let's check it out. To get started on our high five for the 305, we're going to start off with a stock motor. In this case, it is a stock 5 liter uh, tune port motor from back in the 80s or early 90s. So this is a factory tune port motor, stock tune port, throttle body, heads, cam intake, all that stuff. It was a very low mileage tune port motor. It was a comparison that I did for, I think, CarCraft way back where we compared the 5 liter 305 tune port Chevy to the 5 liter 302 small block Ford in the Mustang. So it was a Camaro versus Mustang kind of thing. You can start off with when in your base, uh, start out with the 305. You can use any different combination. There are carbureted versions of the 305, uh, throttle body injected versions, tune port injected versions. And then later on they had them with the Vortec heads, which would kind of be the one that I would recommend. But we started out with a tune port motor and run in stock trim with long tube headers. We already had, we also had an aftermarket ECU, but quite honestly, you could do this with a factory one too, as long as you ran it the way that we run it. That's an open throttle body, no air intake, long tube headers and collector extensions, no accessories, and we run the motor colder than it normally runs in the car. With an optimized tune, our little tune port 305 produced 267 horsepower. Lots of torque though, 333 foot pounds of torque. You can see from the shape of the horsepower and torque curve. In fact, we haven't even got to the crossover point, but the horsepower is already falling off. These things were designed to make lots of low speed torque. That's why we, whenever we talk about the tune port motors, we always say that Chevrolet should have definitely put these in trucks. A truck with a tune port would have been an optimum combination. As you can see here, lots and lots of torque. But here's what happened when we did our first upgrade on it. So you can see we picked up a lot of power. The peak power jumped all the way up to 380 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 361 foot-pounds. Let's take a look at all of the changes that we made to this. We basically changed the heads, cam, and intake and kept the stock bottom end the same. We kept the headers the same. We installed a set of TrickFlow uh, Super 23 305 heads. They're the 175cc heads an Edelbrock Performer RPM air gap intake manifold, carbureted in this case. We also ran this combination with the Holley Stealth Ram throttle body or, or tune port-esque kind of uh, tunnel ram intake manifold, a 650 XP carburetor, and the camshaft that we put in was a Comp 276. It was a 502-516 lift. 224, 230, and 110 degree lobe separation angle. So run, we know that just putting a carbureted combination on an otherwise stock tune port, still big power upgrade even from that, although less on the 305 because it has, you know, it, <laughs> the heads don't flow as much, the cam is mild, the displacement is mild compared to a 350, but you still get gains. We did big gains on this by changing the head cam intake at once, but what I want you to do is look at these two curves and also know that there are lots of things in between these two. You could make something that makes only 300 or 310 or 320. You could keep the tune port on there and do a cam, although you're not going to get as big a gain because the tune port ultimately is going to be limiting the amount of power that you make. You could do a cylinder head, but again, it's better if you change all three of those things. And if you're going to go a carburetor route like this, I honestly would probably start with a Vortec headed deal. That way you might not have to change the head quite as early. That Vortec head flows fairly well. You can get good gains from just doing an intake manifold and a carburetor and an induction system. And it works very well. So you could get in between these two at, you know, anywhere you want. But these are the gains that we got from doing heads, cam, and intake on our tune port 305. Now let's find out with power adders. Now that we've taken a look at the upgrades from heads, cam, and intake on the 305, we know that a lot of other variations are possible. Milder cams, bigger cams, you know, different cylinder heads, all kinds of stuff. Let's take a look and see what happened when we stepped up from the 300 horsepower range to the 500 horsepower range. And I know what you're thinking, what about the 400 horsepower range? Well, we're going to go over that after we get you to 500. So we had our modified heads, cam, and intake 305, and all we had to do was simply add a little bit of nitrous to it. 
and voila, we were picking up lots of power. So we added an NOS kit, a simple plate system on our carbureted combination. You may notice that, hey, look, Richard, this is, in fact, I'll close this. Hey, look, what, what, why is there so much less power down low? That's because we changed the intake during this test. We were trying a single plane intake. So we went from the RPM air gap in 650 to the Victor Jr. intake manifold. And unfortunately, all it did was basically kind of lose power everywhere. It made about the same peak as the RPM as the dual plane. But in this RPM range, as you can see, a dual plane is definitely the way to go. But this is what we added nitrous to, so this is what I'm going to show you. Let's go ahead and take a look at our nitrous setup now. So Victor Jr. 650 carburetor. And we added a Zex nitrous kit with a 46 jet and a 40 fuel jet and the fuel jet was supplied fuel with at, at carbureted fuel pressure because that's very important if you're running an EFI setup and you supply the 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 fuel jet with the nitrous setup if you supply it 58 psi as compared to 7 psi obviously the fuel flow is going to be much much greater and then on EFI kits the jetting would be much smaller on the fuel for the same nitrous jet but we supplied a, a jet kit it is the perimeter plate like equal distribution for 12 holes all the way around into the single plane intake and for those that are going to answer and comment please make a comment Richard can we run the nitrous on a dual plane yes you can run the nitrous on a dual plane it works well on any kind of intake manifold in this case single plane dual plane for the carburetor stuff or a tunnel ram also works well also works for efi stuff we just normally run a wet fogger in front of the throttle body or one of the throttle body plates and all of that seems to work fairly well so here's what happened but richard that's 500 horsepower in, in our case it made 504 horsepower and peak torque was 488 foot pounds we engage it you know in the last the latter part of the rpm range you can engage this earlier than this down at 3,500 or 4,000 and let it carry the nitrous all the way through. This is the kind of gain, basically, you'd get a nice little railroad track all the way through. But we've gone from the 300 horsepower range, the high 300s, to 500 horsepower. What about the 400 horsepower range? If you wanted your 305 to make 400 horsepower, it would be very easy. What I would do is take our 400 horsepower version, put a little bit more camshaft in it, maybe mill the head or change the piston and get the compression up a little bit. You might do a little bit of porting on the intake manifold, maybe a 750 carburetor, uh, but definitely with the camshaft and displacement or, or camshaft and compression, you would definitely push this thing up over 400 horsepower. So that wouldn't be a problem. And you could fit more camshaft. We ran a 224 cam in this. I'll, I'll go ahead and put the specs up so you guys can see that. But if you, there is more available piston to valve clearance so that we could get more camshaft in this, we would just tend to start pushing power a little bit higher in the RPM range. But if you want over 400 horsepower from your 305, it's going to happen probably at a higher RPM range. So now that we've done three, we've explained four and made five, it's time to go to six. So our final high five to the 305 is actually a high six <laughs> because we made over 600 horsepower. We started out in a little bit different configuration. It was the same 305 tune port short block, but it had a smaller camshaft in it and a different induction system than our carbureted deal. We had a comp uh, camshaft. It was 575-65 lift a 218 to 24 at 50 and a 113 so slightly smaller than the other version we still had the same uh, super 23 heads on it we had the holly stealth ram efi intake manifold and a larger throttle body a dual throttle body in that case for the tune part setup 60 pound injectors and a holly hp ecu you know dialing in the air fuel and timing we ran this on uh, the na run was run on 91 octane and run in that configuration we made 372 horsepower and 353 foot pounds of torque and here's what happened after we added our torque storm supercharger you can see power jumped up quite a bit all the way up over 610 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 546 foot pounds so let's take a look and see on our torque storm we also ran with the torque storm in line between the supercharger and the intake manifold and the stealth round throttle body was a procharger air to water intercooler we ran this at uh, with a 3.25 blower pulley and an 8-inch crank pulley. 
and it made, I'll go ahead and put the the boost up there and you can kind of take a look and see what the peak boost was. In fact, I'll give you the range of boost because typically a centrifugal supercharger starts off lower at 3000 RPM. It would be making much more boost at 6000. We kind of have a rising boost, boost curve as you can see from these numbers. That's what happened and that is, <laughs> so we've gone from 300 to talking about 400 to 500 and now ultimately to 600 so you can see it's definitely possible to make this kind of power with a 305. In fact, we could make even more. We could put turbos on it. We could put wilder camshaft in it, all of that stuff. So if you have a 305, you definitely can make power with it. Although all of the comments I'm sure that are going to flood in are going to tell you the best thing that you could do is replace your 305 with a 350. You definitely make more power or replace all of that with an LS. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what to take away from all of these upgrades on our 5 liter, aka 305 small block Chevy. The first and most obvious thing is it's still a small block Chevy. So yes, it will respond to all the normal modifications. Cylinder heads, camshaft, intake manifolds all work on the 305, although with the smaller bore, unlike the 350 and others, there are fewer cylinder heads to choose from from the 305, but we do have choices. You can run the uh, 305 Vortec head. You can run the trick flow head like we had. You can port the existing head. All of those are options. Lots of different camshafts available for them. Lots of different induction systems. And if all else fails, there's always nitrous or boost. I'm controlled to make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.